Hey there, this is James Darknell from The Foundry, and here is my promised occlusion shader video. So this is the continuation of the occlusion video that I posted a couple weeks ago. If you haven't watched that, it's probably a good idea to watch that prior to watching this video because I'm not going to really go through and explain so much about what settings I'm adjusting here. I really go over all of the various settings uh, in the other video, but I really want to show you some techniques for using the occlusion shader video so you can get some nice procedural effects. So this here is what I'm going to be showing you to do. So we're going to have uh, several layers of occlusion here where we're just going to have some general grime in the recessed areas. Then we're going to have some drippy streak areas around here. Uh, and then we have these sort of exposed scratches on the outer edges of this that we're going to put on here. And this is all going to be done procedurally. There's no UV maps. Uh, you can apply these to multiple different models and it'll react to that surface. That's the beauty of the occlusion shader. So let's jump in here and show you how do you can do this. So first all I'm going to do is I'm just going to blow away all of this stuff in my shader tree. And we're going to get back to the base model here. So I just sort of have a green, dull finish here to my surface, but when you want to grunge it up, the first thing I want to do is I want to sort of add the occlusion so that it gets into these sort of recessed areas. So I'm going to go to my add layer here and my processing occlusion and add my first occlusion layer in here. And I want it to be a little bit bigger here. So let's give this 800 millimeters so that kind of stands out a little bit more. And I want to add in some variance to this. This is going to vary the look of that. And I'm going to set my variance scale to about 200 millimeters. So that I'll just add some general splotchiness and some accumulation and grime into those recessed areas. Now, in order to add this into the existing surface that was already there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this blending mode here to multiply. And what that's going to do is it's going to take the dark areas are still going to be visible, but any of the lighter areas are going to multiply through and show that underlying cover. So now we've just added that first level of the grunge here inside of there into those recessed areas. So the next look I'm going to tackle here is I'm going to get the little drippy areas here uh, underneath that. So that we're going to add another occlusion layer in. Processing occlusion. And for that we're going to change the type and we're going to change that to the up type. Now in order to make this look like it's actually dripping, we do that with the variance here. So I'm going to set that variance to 100% on that. And then I'm going to change this to a much smaller scale. That right there is getting that sort of drippy, oozing, dirty underneath kind of look to that. And also to that layer, I'm going to set that to multiply and that's going to multiply over the effects that were already there. So keep in mind, as you keep adding these occlusion layers with the number of occlusion rays that need to be fired per pixel, right here you're increasing your number of rays considerably and it's going to be slower to render. But when you're rendering stills, it generally isn't that big of a difference and when you're rendering animations, you can save a lot of time by baking these textures out in your rendering. So the last little effect we're going to show here is I'm going to show you how to put the little scratches on the outside edge here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new group. So everything that's going to happen inside of this group is going to be a part of those scratches now. So I'm going to add in another material into that group. And I'm going to turn this into sort of a dull metal color. I'm going to darken this up quite a bit. Let me 
maybe bring down the brightness some on our specular. All right, so there's our dull metal. And since this group is not calling any sort of a tag, of course, that anything that's within it is going to overwrite them. So what we're going to do next is we're going to create a mask for that. So I am going to add in my occlusion shader. And I'm going to set my layer effect to shading control. And you're not going to see this on your screen. It's off the screen here. I apologize for that. But I'm going to set this to shader control group mask. And for this, I want to set it to convexity. And what that's going to do is it's going to limit it just to these outer edges. Now I could swap the, the value 1 and the value 2 uh, to get this so that it's on the outer edges instead of these inside edges. But I'm going to be lazy here and I'm just going to click the invert. And we can add a little bit more variance to this as well. Since we're trying to grunge this up. Just that spread angle a little bit so we get it a little bit tighter on some of these corners. And in some cases that would look okay for something just like that. But I wanted it to look like there were scratches that are on here. So I'm going to add in the Enhanced Moto Textures skins and scratches. And in the texture layers for this one, I'm going to set my scratch dispersion to 50. Sometimes it just takes tweaking out and working through these. Of course, I've already kind of gone through and saved you some time and worked out what these values should be. I'm going to set my scratch clip level. And I'm going to change my scratch levels to 7. These are the, the different angles that you'll have on the scratches. And then I'm also going to set my gain to like 98. Now this I'm also going to set as my group mask. And then I'm going to invert that as well. And then now I'm going to set that to multiply. And you can see now these two group masks are multiplying together and they're just showing the scratches on those exposed outer corner edges. So I'm blending together the scratches and the occlusion layers using the blend modes, multiplying that over the top of that in order to just limit that material that I have here just to within the scratched areas that are being exposed by the occlusion. So it can be a little bit to wrap your brain about around those blending modes uh, and working those together. But this is a real simple way that you don't have to UV map, you don't have to go in and paint. And obviously if you spent more time on this and put some effort into this, you could get some really cool effects uh, on here. You can get some rust on the outer edges or just in the inside edges. But those are just some additional ways that you can use the occlusion shader to make automatic materials that react to the topology of your mesh without having to go through and spend a lot of effort manually painting and UV mapping all of your objects. So that is several ways you can grunge up your model using the occlusion shader. I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching.